Okay, welcome to unit four. This is our last unit of the year. Aren't you excited? And in this unit, we're going to look at both parametric and polar functions. But today, we're just going to look at, in this video, we're going to look at arc length and parametric equations. Our objective is to find the length of a curve. That is the only calculus that we're doing in this video. Uh, the remaining of the video will be spent on reviewing pre a pre-calc topic. So this is the formula for arc length. You need to memorize this. You just need to know it. Let's do an example. We want to find the length of the curve y equals natural log cosine x from 0 to pi over 3. That should be 0 comma pi over 3. So basically where we have to start is finding the derivative of y. So using chain rule, we see that the derivative of the natural log of cosine of x is, the derivative of cosine x is negative sine x, and the derivative of natural log of cosine x is 1 over cosine x. Then simplifying that, we get y is equal to the ne uh, negative tan x. So now all we have to do is just integrate that from 0 to pi over 3, the square root of 1 plus negative tan x squared. I just simply use my calculator to get the answer of 1.317. Now remember, in calculus, we always round to three places behind the decimal. Please don't miss that on the AP exam. Now, the only difference between this problem and the one we did a minute ago is that this one is in terms of y. But you will see that the concept is exactly the same. We're going to start by uh, simplifying this just to make it easier to take the derivative. So I don't have to use product rule. So I distributive one-third radical y to each term. And then I am going to take the derivative of that, of x, with respect to y. And once I have my derivative, I can just put it into my handy-dandy formula. And then I can use my calculator to get an answer, remembering to round to three places behind the decimal, at least. Easy peasy. All right, now that's all the calculus in this video. Now we're going to look at a review pre-calculus and eliminating the para uh, parameter. Recall from pre-calculus that a parametric equation is two or more equations with a common variable. Most of the time that parameter or that common variable is t, sometimes it's theta. So what we want to do when we want to sketch this, we have to find arbitrary values of t. So I, in other words, I'm just making up values for t. I started, I went from 0 to 7. You don't have to. So when t is 0, I am putting t into that equation for x equals 3 minus 2t. If t is 0, that's 3 minus 2 times 0, or just 3. And then I'm going to put t in for the y equation. So that will be 2 plus 3 times 0, which is 2. I do the same thing for 1. So 3 minus 2 times 1 is 1. And 2 plus 3 times 1 is 5. Then I put in 2. So 3 minus 2 times 2 is 3 minus 4, negative 1. And in my y value, that would be 2 plus 6, 8. If I put in 3 for t, I get 3 minus 6 and 2 plus 9. If I put in 4, I get 3 minus 8 and 2 plus 12. So now I'm going to graph this. And when I graph this, I use the xy coordinates. I only use the xy coordinates and I write this as if it is an ordered pair because it is. So my ordered pairs that I am graphing are 3, 2, 1, 5, negative 1, 8, negative 3, 11, and negative 5, 14. Now, I could have done more. I could have started with negative values, um, but I'm, I just did enough to show the, the pattern. So when x is 3, 1, 2, 3, y is 2. When x is 1, y is 5, 3, 4, 5. When x is negative 1, y is 8, 6, 7, 8. When x is negative 3, 
y is 11, 9, 10, 11. So I can see, and then when it's 5, it's four, negative 5, it's 14, like here. So what I want to do is when I sketch this line, and I haven't been drinking, I just can't draw a straight line, I want to show the direction in which it's moving. So I want to show that as my as time increases, my function is traveling to the left, upward. It's traveling left and upward. And so I put these arrows there to show it. All right, let's talk about eliminating the parameter. And once again, this is a pre-calc topic, so I'm going to kind of go through it quickly. When I eliminate the parameter, I am solving for t um, with respect to one of the the variables and putting it into what we call rectangular form. Into So we just have x and y in our equation. So I'm going to start by solving for t in terms of x in that first equation. So I subtract 3 from both sides and divide by negative 2. Then once I have that value for t, I am going to replace t in the y equation. And I can see that that is linear with the slope of negative 3 halves and a y-intercept of 13 halves. But I can see that that func function is linear. <clears throat> In problem two, I know just from experience that this is going to give me a sideways parabola. So I'm going to solve for t in terms of y. I'm also doing that because I want to get rid of that square root of t. So I'm going to solve for t in terms of y. So that means I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides, divide by negative 1, and then square both sides. Then I'm going to replace that value of t in for x. Now, this produces a sideways parabola with the vertex at negative 2, 1, I think, and it's going to open to the left because that y is negative. Again, you can graph this on your calculator to be sure what it would look like. The last one, most students miss this one. Uh, what we have to do for this is we have to use a concept from pre-calculus, uh, an identity, sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals 1. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to square both sides. Then I'm going to add the two equations together. And then I'm going to replace cosine squared plus sine squared with 1, and I get x squared plus y squared equals 1, which is a circle with center of 0 and a radius of 1. Okay, this last problem, we once again are going to have to remember a uh, pre-calc uh, or an identity. And remember that cosine 2 theta is equal to 2 cosine squared theta minus 1. And since x is equal to cosine, I'm going to replace y with 2 co 2 cosine squared theta minus 1, but since um, x is equal to cosine, I can write that as y is equal to 2x squared minus 1. Okay, that's it for this video. Uh, please watch the next video for more exciting, oh, I spelled exciting wrong, par parametric equations. Have an amazing day.